yeah now is it uh, i have shared i yes. uh, is it visible yeah live yeah, yeah. yeah great please just start the slide show uh, renu ma'am you can start Good evening. Good evening, and welcome, dear participants, uh, to this MNET series of Learn from Home series. We welcome our speaker for the day, Mr. Mahesh Dudankar. Mr. Mahesh Dudankar is a secondary school English teacher working at Sri Krishna Vidyalay, Gangoti. Taluka Umerga District, Osmanabad. I hope so. I have uh, pronounced it properly. He is uh, a member of study it's group. It's Gunjoti. Of I'm sorry. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. It's Gunjoti. 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 It's yeah. with, okay. Gunjoti Taluka Umerga District, Osmanabad. He is a member of study group of Balbati Pune. He is also a member of scrutiny committee of state board Pune. He is an active member of INET and Emelcha. He was a part of the British Council Ellis as the master trainer and mentor program. He believes in doing experiments in classroom teaching. He writes educational blog, and you can visit his uh, visit and uh, read his blog at www.mahesdudhankar.wordpress.com. So welcome, sir. And today, sir is going to take question number three B, that is poem appreciation. So yes, sir. You can take over. Thank you very much, uh, Renu, ma'am, for this brief introduction. Uh, it's my sheer privilege to be a part of this uh, webinar series, Learn from Home, organized by Mnet, and with excellent technical support from Inet. And uh, as it comes to my turn, I'll be dealing with uh, the topic of uh, appreciation of a poem. So, dear students and uh, dear teachers, friends, continuing with the series of lectures that so far has uh, been taken in this series, I'm going to talk about appreciation of a poem. This question: If you all have, uh, if you all remember, the series began, or the theme of the very series, uh, this very series is uh, that how to deal with the activity sheet. uh friends we all understand the critical situation we all are going through currently now that the time is flying the students of 10th standard may soon face their examinations so thinking keep the, keeping this in mind mnet and inet thought of giving support to the students of uh, 10th standard and 9th standard except english medium all the other mediums uh going for a series like this so it all began with the format of activity sheet and a uh, section wise dealing of the questions so today i'm going to deal about appreciation of a poem so the first thing uh, that should actually come to anyone's mind is uh, why appreciate a poem i mean is it just because uh, it is going to be asked in the examination that we need to appreciate a poem is it because it helps us qualify the examination or get better marks in the examination that we need to appreciate a poem actually no uh, uh, appreciating a poem gives us a new way to look at a poem if you remember the traditional way of teaching and learning of a poem would rather be reciting it aloud or memorizing it okay but in this question it is actually beyond the re uh, reciting of the poem it actually helps us explore the beauty of a poem okay now we all understand the fact that 
minimum number of words and maximum number of expression is what is called as a poem and poet does that fabulously and that thing we need to explore so that is the reason why we need to appreciate a poem so students let's not keep this question only for the activity sake we let's take this uh, let's inculcate this view this approach of looking at a poem let's try to appreciate every poem that comes across okay so and i i would also go on to say that let's not uh, appreciate english poem alone like because it's a part of english activity sheet you may also consider it uh, for other language poems as well so this is for developing a attitude towards the way we take poem okay so that is why we need to appreciate a poem so the next point now, since we are talking about activity sheet in particular because the series uh, is based on it the points that are considered for appreciating a poem is title which is for half mark the name of the poet or poetess also carries half mark the rhyme scheme carries one mark the central theme carries two marks figure of speech carries one mark so we have five points here okay and these points are asked in the examination for the assessment but dear students if we have taken a look at the activity on page number 5 in our ssc my english course book on page number 5 there are three more extra points given towards the appreciation of a poem which includes favorite line why i like or dislike a poem and similar to that okay so those points are extra points for your uh, uh, let's say developing a point of view towards the poem okay that actually helps you to understand a poem well and express a, uh, your understanding about it well however for the assessment only these five points are asked okay pardon me for the mistake in spelling of marks next to one students let's uh, come straight to uh, a poem which happens to be a teenager's prayer in ssc my english course book class 10 okay the first poem is that now why i'm talking about poem is this like the uh, the previous slide talked about points to be covered okay so now look at this the title the poet the rhyme scheme central theme figure of speech now while appreciating uh, a poem you need to keep these points in mind it's not just about plainly reading it okay i mean uh, you need to go beyond that you need to identify certain things like the very title of it the poet uh, or poetess uh, the rhyme scheme of it isn't it so these points uh, you have these points before you when you are asked uh, to appreciate a poem in the examination A, a, a poem like this may be asked in the examination where a poem full full flesh poem is given and you are supposed to appreciate it well now students when i read out this poem aloud i would request you to just have a look at these points and try to get the answers for this for example the title the first part the first point okay you can immediately see that the title is given there right so the my point is when i'm going to read it aloud you just need to make certain notes about these points okay and later on we will discuss on how that uh, how to uh, how to go about appreciating a poem in proper way okay now let's go for a loud reading of this poem a teenager's prayer each day brings new beginnings decisions i must make i am the only one to choose the road that i will take 
I can choose to take the road of life that leads to great success or travel down the darkened road that leads to great distress. Please open up my eyes, dear Lord, that I might clearly see. Help me stand for what is right. Bring out the best in me. Help, Lord, to just say no when temptation comes my way, that I might keep my body clean and fit for life each day. When my teenage years are over, I know that I will see that life is lived its very best with you walking next to me. J. Morse. So here the poem ends. All right. Now, students, as you know that these points we need to uh, we need to consider while appreciating a poem. Okay. The title, the name of the poet, and all that. So let's see. Uh, uh, I have done a sample for you. I'm sure you have got uh, your answers ready. Uh, with this uh, loud reading. However, because I have uh, let I have answered uh, this part, I will give you another chance with another poem in the next slide. Okay, now let's see how to write an appreciation of a poem. Students, as you can see, the title here is Teenager's Prayer. Now there is something missing here. Can anyone tell what is missing in this title? Or is the title correct? Anyone? Is the title that I mentioned here correct? Or do you think any correction is required? Yes or no? You can answer. Any response? Quick response. Yeah. Uh, that is what the student is saying. Figures of speech. No, no, no. I'm just talking about the title that I mentioned. I have mentioned teenager's prayer. Is the title correct? Yes or no? If it is yes, then we will move ahead. If it is a no, then what is that needs to be corrected. I think A is missing. A yes. teenager's prayer. Yes, exactly. Okay, so this is it, was that a student? Was yeah, that a student? Mundlik. Wow, that's really a great observation, Sunita. A teenager's prayer. That's the right title. So students, what I wanted to tell you here is there are things that we might take things lightly. Okay. So I mean, it's audible. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to highlight here that certain things we may take it lightly. I mean, I have seen my students also taking certain points very lightly. Okay. Like mentioning the title. But these things really matter that you cannot be so negligible in mentioning the title wrongly. Okay. You have to mention it correctly. Okay. So there a uh, is missing. So a uh, has to be mentioned there, a uh, teenager's prayer. Next is poet J. Morse. I believe that's correct. The rhyme scheme. Yes. Now this is something very interesting. I believe uh, you all have done it in ninth standard when you are in ninth standard. Our students who are in ninth standard now, we can discuss about it. The rhyme scheme is A, B, C, B. I, I'm also, I also believe that in the previous uh, session conducted by Avinash Rade, sir, uh, he has dealt with this uh, part where rhyme scheme is explained. Okay, so the, uh, the rhyme scheme of this poem is A, B, C, B. The central theme. Uh, we, uh, uh, do you need more explanation about the rhyme scheme? Anyone? We will, uh, we can... I'm not getting any answer. Okay. Because uh, I believe rhymes find, uh, finding out uh, rhyme scheme is pretty easy. The first line uh, has to be mentioned. The rhyme of the first line, the rhyming word of the first line has to be mentioned A. If the succeeding line have the similar rhyming word, then again A comes. Unless if there is a different word, then comes B. 
So like we have here the first stanza, you see beginnings, the first stanza, the first line, the end, the last word of the first line is beginnings. By default, you have to write it as a. Okay. Now, if you try to find beginnings rhyming word in the same stanza, you don't find any. So what you have to do, you have to go with the next letter that is B with the next uh, word make. Okay. So A, B and choose comes the next word. And that is also not rhyming with either of these two lines. So that becomes C. But look at the last one, take that rhymes with make. So we have named make uh, uh, under the rhyme scheme as B. So the last uh, line take also goes with B. So that way the rhyme scheme is A, B, C, B. Okay. Now the central theme of this. Okay. I have uh, mentioned it already here, but I'll give you a hint. I mean, most of the time what happens is students find it easy to write the title, the poet name, uh, the name of the poet. Perhaps even they find it easy to write the rhyme scheme also, but sometimes they uh, take central theme in a different way. Uh, maybe they do not comprehend well or they do not express well. I'll, 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 exp I'll give you a tip how to go about this point, but let's read out the central theme of this poem. It's about teenager who prays for a stable mind. Okay, I mean, he's praying for a stable mind. He's just like any teenage, any other teenager like you, like you students. Okay, so he, he is praying for a stable mind. He wants everything to be clear. It's about having ability to take right decisions. He also prays for strong will to say no to any tem temptation. Okay. In a nutshell, now students, in a nutshell is an expression to say that in short, okay, he wishes to have God next to him in every walk of life. Okay, so students, now this central theme that I've mentioned here is completely based on the comprehension of the poem. Okay, now if you have seen the marking part, right from the beginning, the presenters have been talking about that the activity sheet is divided in a way that 40% of it is easy, 40% of it is uh, moderate, and 20% of it is difficult. So if you look at this appreciation of a poem points, certain points are pretty easy. You, you get marks just as, quick, uh, as you know, uh, very, very easily you can get marks in some points. But in, uh, in points like central theme, you might have to struggle a bit hard, or you might have to think a little bit more than uh, what uh, more than taking it easily okay so so jyoti patel is say say what is the easy track of central team yeah my next slide will talk uh, will tell you about it let's uh, have uh, let's have a little bit patience about it okay so uh, the basic idea uh, the basic thing what i'm to trying to trying to tell here is the central theme completely depends on your comprehension of a, of that poem okay so whenever teacher is teaching a poem in the class or you are attending an online class of uh, of this poem thing please pay full attention towards it so that your clear central theme can get uh, you will get it cleared okay i'll tell you the hint in the in the next slide the next point mentioned here is a figure of speech okay uh, i have picked up alliteration okay uh, which which is reflected in the line travel down the darkened road okay the sound the is repeated in the beginning of two words. Kindly make a point, students, that the sound the, I'm not telling the letter D. Okay. Sometimes the letters may be repeated and it may seem alliteration. But let's make it a, a clear point that the sounds may not go the same. Okay. For example, it, the letter T in the word to is different from the sound in the word the. Okay. So the same letter is there, but the sounds are different. But in alliteration, we need the same sound. Okay. Like in this line, travel down the darkened road. Here, the sound is repeated in the word down and darkened. So let's clear. 
Next uh, figure of speech is inversion. Okay, decisions I must make. Now, what is inversion? Inversion, in short or in easy way words, if I put, I would say that uh, normal word order is inverted. Okay, it is it put in mixed order. Let's say it's not like otherwise we would have put this sentence in a way like I must make decisions. That would sound more appropriate, isn't it? But students, we uh, the poet has mentioned decisions I must make. So what he has done is he has changed the word order. That is inversion. So these two figures of speech I have mentioned here. So this is the way I have appreciated this poem, students. But there are certain things that we need to keep in mind. Uh, and I'm going to give you certain hints about uh, these things. Let's see in the next slide. OK, now some tips. Like the common question, everyone like Jyoti had out uh, that ma I I hope that was a student. Yes, yes. <laughs> Otherwise, sir. it may it may not it may sound disrespectful if it is a teacher. I'm sorry for that. Uh, but yes, uh, the first question uh, that came to me because that is based on my general observation: how to determine the central theme of a poem? Okay, now how to decide? Now that's a common question every student might have. Okay, now in one line I can answer you. Just think about what is the poem about. Okay, what is the poem about? And the answer to that question is your central theme. Okay, students. Now the teenager's prayer, a teenager's prayer. If I think about this question, like if I when I'm writing central theme, I when I think about this question, like what is the poem about? I may think that it is a poem about a teenager who is praying for a stable mind, who wants to take right decisions, who wants to stay away from temptations, who wants God to walk next to him. Okay, so you see these points, I get it, isn't it? So this is the key question to think about the central theme. So that way you can get to the core. Okay. The next question is, uh, I mean, the next point is figure of speech. Okay, students, uh, the board uh, does not compel or let's say does not expect students to write more than one figure of speech. And the board also does not expect to write the example of, of uh, the line where that figure of speech reflects. Okay. So by that, I mean that only mentioning the name of the figure of speech would suffice the purpose. Okay, only mentioning the name. Like, you know, if you have mentioned alliteration, yes, that would be that would be okay. Hmm? If you have mentioned inversion, that would be absolutely fine. Okay, and any one you have to mention anyway. And if you could find one or two more than one or don't waste your time much more there. I guess you can write one or maximum two that would uh, even if you find more than two, uh, you need not write because that way uh, that would consume your time. Okay. Uh, however, students, I would recommend you to practice writing the lines for self clarification. Remember, I'm recommending this for your self clarification for your better understanding of the uh, uh, figure of speech concept. It is not at all expected in the uh, activity sheet. You just need to mention the name in that pretty sheet. Okay. The next is a rhyme scheme. Okay. Now, many of the times I've seen uh, that even teachers get a question, which is absolutely correct, actually. Like whether the rhyme scheme of the whole poem has to be mentioned or only the first stanza, the board clearly mentions that it's absolutely fine to mention only first stanza's rhyme scheme. Okay, if you have seen in my appreciation of poem, I have mentioned only few, or only first lines appreciation, uh, this rhyme scheme. Otherwise, uh, I have not mentioned anything. Students, the appreciation of a poem is just an initiation uh, uh, for you to look at a literary piece. Okay, uh, as you go, uh, go to the higher classes, you will be getting uh, more points, deeper way to look at this, uh, this thing. Like, rhyme scheme, figures of speech, and everything. But that is far away from us. But since it's an, uh, it is for the introductory level for you all, 
it's only i mean it's okay to mention the only first stanza rhyme scheme okay so do not spend more time on mentioning the whole uh, poems rhyme scheme i hope these i mean these three uh, common questions are usually get it whenever i talk to my students or some teachers even raise questions about these i hope these three questions or common questions are answered now students now this is for your practice pick up a pen and paper quickly because the points that i had uh, mentioned to you earlier uh, yeah these points uh, i'm going to read out a poem for you and you are going to quickly make notes about these points on that poem so are you ready this poem is called as basket full of moonlight okay oh moon give me moonlight basket full or two baskets full with seeds of moonlight from the city to my village on the sides of the path i want to sow many small small moons of light the whole village goes to the city daily to work yeah it's visible ma'am yes okay i'm sorry yes. okay oh, for a moment it went blank over here okay uh, it becomes dark on its way back as my village is quite far the route is tough and full of snakes and scorpions neither bus nor cart flies there must be some mistake in that line when my father returns home i am asleep and he goes back early in the morning while i'm sleeping oh moon give me a basket full of moonlight on loan i want to light the dark route so that my father returns early i too want to hear fairy tales and stories from him oh moon give me a basket full of moonlight i want to sow seeds of moon on the sides of path sunil sharma okay so students this this is a poem this is a 1.3 poem in uh, your course book all right so someone quickly tell me the title of this poem quickly the title of this poem the basket full of moon light the ba the basket full of moonlight okay any ba basket full of moonlight yeah, yeah 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 let's see basket full of moonlight remember even an article could make a difference okay so okay fine basket full of moonlight is correct uh, the name of the poet i will show it to uh, show it to you on the screen so that i mean because this is how you need to practice uh, even in the activity sheet the whole poem is given to you it's before your eyes who is the poet sunil sharma nadav habibai se great great nadav uh, great observation now what about time scheme remember in the previous poem uh, we had mentioned a b c b s um rhyme scheme but three what verse. is the rhyme nadas habiba yeah. is saying it's three words great another you, you seem to be a champion that's really wonderful three words yes but shivani uh, is saying a b c b okay a b c b i guess we need an explanation from shivani if she finds this rhyme scheme in this poem so okay um 
fine. Actually, it's a free verse, like Nadav said. Uh, congratulations, Nadav, for, a right, a right, for the right observation. Yes, it's free verse. Now, why it's a free verse, uh, we will discuss it uh, after a little while. Uh, now, someone can, can someone tell me the central theme of this poem? Remember the central theme of this poem? I mean, the, the, how to determine it? Like, I had told you to think on the line that what is the poem about? Okay, think on that line and you will get the central theme. What is this poem about? Maybe one or two sentences. I, I can understand it might be difficult to type out the whole thing. They are typing, sir. Wow. That's really nice. Uh, Shivani is saying, a boy is set to the moon to give me moonlight. Okay. Me moonlight? Oh, the yeah. boy said, yeah. That would be uh, appropriate. About Shweta is saying, about village life and its problem problems. Wonderful. Great. Yeah, nice observation. Yeah, uh, things about the village life is also mentioned in this poem. Great. Okay, if uh, if there are no more responses, we no, will go ahead. Okay. Uh, Jyoti is saying, moon gives moonlight to all. Okay, so that's the poem about? And uh, Harshad is saying, yeah. the child wants to light road from the city to his village. Yeah, so... Um, and and uh, Sajan uh, Patil also has written, sir, one minute, huh? the central idea of the poem is child expresses his loneliness and away from the remote area. Away from the remote area or being yeah, in the remote area? He wants to be actually. away from the remote area, I think. He is already in the remote area, actually. Mm. But yes, uh, you have uh, very nicely mentioned about his loneliness, dear. Yeah. Very and, nice. And the child wants to light, lighten the path. Yeah, uh, Ajinkya great. has given a very nice one. Yeah. The theme of the poem is about the request of a child to the moon. He wish, his wish is to light up his village road by using moonlight, expresses his love for, uh, towards his father. Wow, that's perfect. <laughs> I'm very and, happy uh, about this. Yes, and villagers Ajinkya. are facing the problem of electricity. So the child is asking the moon for moon for moonlight. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So uh, students, I believe you understand the poet's uh, you know point of view when you are thinking about the central idea. Kids, this is the key. Okay, this is the key to think. Okay, about what is the poem about? That this question by answering this question, you will straight away come to the central theme. So uh, what you all have said is absolutely correct. But just keep this in mind, what is the poem about? And that will give you the central theme. Great. Finally, uh, can anyone mention a figure of speech in, from this poem? Alliteration, Rameshwar Tagade is saying, repetition, alliteration, apostrophe. Okay. Oh, great. Bingo, bingo, bingo. Jitu is saying, personification. Shweta okay. is saying, metaphor. Metaphor. Sufyan okay. is saying, apostrophe. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, students, for your great and response. And Omkar is saying, hyperbole. Hyperbole. Okay. Mm, fine, fine, fine. Perhaps, yes, what you all have said uh, is uh, true. I'm sure you are, you can support your response with uh, the line from the poem where it reflects. Okay, students. But I'm very happy that you all are aware of certain terms. Okay, hyperbole, uh, repetition, 
alliteration, apostrophe, inversion, metaphor, simile, all these words, okay? And uh, if, sir, if some of you are still not aware of some of these terms, please go ahead and explore these terms, okay? Uh, because it's very interesting to find uh, in these points. Okay. Sir, uh, uh, yes, I just had this thing to say. Uh, spellings are very important in uh, figure of speech. Like yes. students have written a wrong spelling for apostrophe and repetition. Ah, now that might be, you know, that might cost a mark for you students. Even if your answer seems to be right, and if you lose, if you do not write the spelling correctly, I'm sorry, you will get no marks. Okay? So, what is the spelling of repetition? R e p e t i t i o n. Anita and other students understood the spelling. Mm -hmm. You are asking or telling me, ma'am? I'm telling them. Acha, you're telling them. <laughs> because they have written the wrong spellings. Okay, okay, fine, fine. But uh, fabulous responses, students. Thank you very much for your response. But please do remember uh, that whatever response you're giving for the figure of speech, try to have an understanding where in which line it reflects. And this is for your practice sake, okay? Uh, please also remember that it is not expected in the activity sheet response, okay? Now there is one fun activity for you all. Are you ready, students? Now look at this title, spot the error and correct it. Now this is your chance students. I have made some mistakes here while appreciating the poem and you need to spot the error and correct it. Look at the title I have mentioned here, basket full of sunlight. Can someone spot the error? And if there is no error, then we will move ahead. Yes, Rohan has raised his hand. Yes, there is the error. Rohan, correct the error. Sunil okay. Sharma. Yash no. Kulkarni Singh. Okay, Yash Kulkarni Singh, Sunil Sharma. What about the title, Basket Full of Sunlight? Is it correct? Then if, it, if it's correct... No, no, Baban is saying, Basket Full of Moonlight. Oh, great. Nice. Nice observation. It's not sunlight, it's moonlight, basket full of moonlight. Right? Okay, sun is saying sunlight is equal to moonlight. So that's wrong. Sunlight is wrong. Yeah, sunlight is an error there and you need to correct it to the moonlight. Okay, who is the poet? Sunil Mehta. Is that correct? Everyone has given that answer, Sunil Sharma. Okay, great. <laughs> Uh, rhyme scheme. Look at this. It's free verse. No rhyme scheme here. So, is there an error here? Is there an error here? Rhyme scheme. If it's if there is no error, then we will move ahead. No, they're saying right. Yeah, free verse is right. Correct. Yeah, it's free verse is correct. Okay. I'm going to talk more about this free verse uh, thing. Okay. Uh, students, they, uh, sometimes, I mean, it's not uh, that the poet always maintains the rhyme scheme in his uh, poem. Okay. Sometimes the poet uh, writes it in with, uh, with no rhyme scheme in the poem. In such condition, uh, you cannot just leave it blank. I have seen some students that finding no rhyme scheme there, they have not mentioned anything there and they have left it blank, thinking that there is no rhyme scheme, so there is no need to mention it. Okay. But students, you need to mention, if there is no rhyme scheme, you need to mention it as free verse. Okay. Sometimes, uh, students and uh, some students have also used the term blank verse. Okay. Uh, free verse and blank verse, both are actually correct. I mean, they both are rhyme-free meter, uh, rhyme-free poem. Okay, there is no rhyme in uh, uh, in the poem. So either you can mention as free verse or blank verse. Technically speaking, there is a slight difference between these two, free verse and blank verse. Blank verse has uh, something called meter, iambic pentameter in it. Okay, it is not meter-free. It is definitely rhyme-free. Okay. I'm not going to confuse you more with the detailed explanation of it, but students, if you do not find any rhyme scheme in a poem, please mention there it as free words or blank words. 
Now look at this central theme. You have to find out, uh, spot the error here. Central theme. This poem is about a grown-up man who wishes to light the dark roots with moonlight. That uh, that would make his father come home early and tell him bedtime stories. The poet has portrayed rural life where people go to town for job purpose and return home late. Okay, is there any error? Uh, in the central theme. If there is no error, uh, we will move ahead. No response. There must be timing. Typing, sir. Is it? I mean, there's no such a big error, dear. Dears, just mention. Man the is error. wrong. Yeah. Grown up man is wrong. Absolutely. Bingo. Sajan is saying. Yeah, Sajan. Sarita is also saying. Yeah, it's not about a grown up man, isn't it? It's about a child who thinks. Yeah, about it. Nandini Shela is also saying. Yeah, it's a child, not grown up man. Wonderful, wonderful. See, I got your attention, actually. That's really nice of you all to have paid attention and corrected me in this. Okay, wonderful. Now, figure of speech. Uh, now, uh, some, you, some of you have already mentioned uh, some of the figures of speech here. Uh, see here, I have also given an example of a line. But mind you, you need not give an example of a line in, the, uh, in an activity sheet. But I would still recommend you to practice it writing for your better comprehension students. So look at, uh, look at this apostrophe, okay? The example uh, where I found it here was, uh, oh moon, give me a basket full of moonlight on loan. So is it correct? Is there an error here? Look at the next uh, figure of speech also, repetition. Example, small, small moons of light. Is there an, any error in these two figures of speech and examples? Repetition. Okay. So who has mentioned that? Sharat Pansare is saying repetition. Okay. You find an error there, dear. Uh, can you please correct it if you find if you have found an error there? So correct it. Repetition is right. Yeah. So what's correct. the right answer? Repetition is actually correct. I mean that example is also right. And uh, if there is no response coming up, then... No, uh, sir. Is it, um, they're saying no errors. Maybe they have to go back to the poem. No, actually, uh, in, no, no. The examples that I've given here are absolutely suitable for no, the... No, uh, uh, Kalyani is saying it's not repetition, it's alliteration. Oh, my dear. Why, why do you think it's an alliteration? No, other people are saying same word is repeated. So they're telling Nandit, uh, Kalyani that... Okay, so thank, thank you, Kalyani. You have brought this up uh, so that I can discuss about the difference between alliteration and repetition. Uh, students, uh, repetition is all about a word or a line itself repeating in the whole poem, okay, or in a single line. Remember, I'm talking about the repetition of a word or a line, okay. Now, in this example, small, the word small is repeated. Hence, this is a perfect example of repetition, okay. And alliteration, we have already discussed. Okay, the sound of the uh, the beginning sound of the word, if it is repeated, then it is alliteration. Let's keep this difference in mind. Okay, so there is no error in figures of speech and their examples. Uh, okay. Rameshwar is saying full stop is not there. <laughs> Okay, okay, great. <laughs> I'm I'm sure you must be a great observer, my dear. If uh, if there is a line, if there is a full stop in the poem line, I believe I must have, I should also give it here, which I have not given. Thank you very and much Kishan for that. Var, var, var they say, what is hyperbole? And saying my oh. answer, answer, no one is asking my question. Okay, what's your question? What's, what's what question? is hyperbole? Hyperbole is something that you uh, make a huge out of very petty thing. Okay. 
something very small issue and you are making a huge thing a huge issue out of it that is something uh, uh, called hyperbole okay okay so let's move ahead yes sir now concluding tips okay okay the first thing like earlier uh, renu ma'am had also highlighted uh, this thing follow proper punctuation marks while copying the title and the name of the poet i mean not only that actually follow punctuation marks all over the appreciation of the poem okay now students this might um, uh, seem funny to you but even the brightest child may make a punctuation error taking uh, you know writing the title of the poem and the name of the poet seems to be very easy and yes it is very easy but we need to keep in mind the punctuation mark that it carries suppose the title of the poem uh, has a as has an exclamation mark there don't you think it's important to carry that punctuation mark while you write the appreciation of the poem of course it's important okay the capital letters wherever it's mentioned if uh, if an article is missing uh, I, i mean if an article is there like a teenager's prayer o has to be carried properly with a capitalization so students you need to keep this punctuation marks easily i have seen the brightest child making silliest mistake in these points so please uh take it seriously take this punctuation marks thing seriously to get to get uh, full marks in this question i ensure to keep your uh, appreciation error free error free by that i mean you are uh, like uh, renu ma'am had told about this uh, mistake in the spelling of repetition and alliteration and apostrophe okay students even if your answers are right and if you have made mistakes in the uh, spellings you are out of the race okay you will not get the marks so please keep your spellings intact carry all the punctuation marks correctly so that's all from me okay thank you very much students i hope uh, i could clear most of your uh, points thank you very much and uh, happy learning yes sir there are no questions because you have cleared all the questions questions yeah i hope <laughs> there are doubts sir yeah. here yeah, all the answers is given yeah if so you might have me yeah if there is anything that i need to answer i'll be happy to answer that no sir they are saying okay sir you have understood okay great 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 yeah. in fact every all the doubts are cleared we had a doubt of free verse central theme that you have cleared in your explanation yes yes yes, yes. and even punctuation mark so yeah. Yeah. right now there are no questions thank you very much bingo so that was a great question it was lovely they're saying, to uh, prashant is saying thank you sir for such nice teaching wow that thank you prashant i am glad that you liked my explanation uh, i'm yeah. sure you will uh, do well in your examination how many types of figure of speech sham nigam is asking uh, you need not uh, get that number my dear trust me you will be scared with the number <laughs> okay just uh, just a handful of figures of speech for you at this level is absolutely fine the le- uh, the names of figures of speech that we have discussed during this session are fine enough to carry uh, you know carry out this question rahul is saying nice information yeah thank you rahul thank you very much so, so thank let's you let's end it up yeah yes sir thank you sir wonderful session very much because this is what they were asking for mm-hmm. and uh, i'll ask uh, samina ma'am to propose a vote of thanks thank you renu ma'am may i yes sir. yes ma'am uh, good evening everyone on behalf of the members of mnet i would like to thank mr mahesh sudhakar for volunteering his time and providing us with such an informative and engaging presentation on the topic of appreciation of the poem the topic explained by you will be of immense help for the students and 
I hope our students will surely apply all the details explained by you. I would also like to appreciate the constant efforts of Mr. Nadim Khan for providing the necessary technical support to MNET. Many thanks to the host and convener, Mrs. Renu Dhotre, for organizing the series of webinars, Learn From Home, through the platform of MNET. These webinars have enabled the students to stay updated with their knowledge and can be utilized by them. I would like to extend our thanks to the participants for effectively participating in the Learn From Home series webinars held till date. We look forward to such enthusiasm from our participants in future as well. Once again, a huge thanks to everyone. Have a great evening. Stay home, stay safe. Thank you, you. Samina, ma'am. And um, Nareem sir is saying also saying wonderful session. Session coming okay. from such a uh, personality. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, allow me to express my views uh, for yes, today's sir. session. Uh, just a few things. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mnet, for uh, giving me this platform for uh, expressing my views on this topic. Uh, and uh, thank you, Inet, for excellent technical support. Uh, for uh, reaching, helping us reach to everyone across the state, all the students, aspiring students. Uh, and thank you all the teachers who are actually collaborating with us to run this uh, series successfully. Thank you very much and have a pleasant evening. Thank you, everyone. I end the session. Yeah, thank you, ma'am.